guys so today I'm going to be doing filming my August wrap-up um, I was gonna to try to pick up the stack of books to show you and it's too big I read a lot this month I read a whole lot I have read 13 books this month which seems like that, that, that seems excessive I don't know why I did this or how I did this but I, I did so I'm just gonna go through tell you about the books I read first book I read actually I started it and finished it this month is Mary Barton by Elizabeth Gaskell um, this, in the first five books, I talked about a little in my reading vlog that I put up, so I'll probably not spend too much time on them, but I also don't think I gave good summaries in that video, so we'll go ahead and do that too. So this is about a girl who lives in a factory town back in the 1800s, and, um, her dad is a factory worker, and uh, her mom dies when she was really, died when she was really little. Um, but she doesn't work in the factory because her dad did not want that for her. But basically, she, um, let's see, her dad is involved in, like, the union and strikes and stuff, which is a theme that Gaskell likes, I think. Um, and there's the, her dad's friend's son, yeah, her dad's friend's son is in love with her and has been in love with her for ages. Um, but then she starts, um, falling in love with, um, somebody else who is of the, um, the upper class, the, um, owners, and, uh, obviously she keeps that from her dad, but, uh, <laughs> um, it was good, uh, then things happen, there's more things that happen than just that, um, but yeah, it was good, I would probably give this about three stars, maybe three and a half, a uh, five, um, I did not like it as well as I like the ones that I've seen the miniseries for, so that would be, um, uh, Wives and Daughters, and North and South and Cranford. Those are the other Gaskell books I've read. But this was still pretty good. I really, I did enjoy this one. Next book I finished was uh, When Jesus Wept by Brock and Bodie. I, again, I said this in my vlog. I think it's Tawny, but I'm not positive on how to pronounce their last name. Um, it's a story about Lazarus, um, who, the one Jesus raised from the dead. It was, it was pretty good. I'd say this is three and a half or four stars. Not quite sure which one I'd give it, but I will say it did do a few things I'm not a fan of, where, like, it made Mary Magdalene a, um, woman of ill repute, shall we say, when she's not that in scripture. Like, all we know about her in that way is that she had demons, and Jesus cast them out. Um, actually, I don't think there were demons. I don't think she was demon-possessed, which the scripture does tell us. It also made Mary Magdalene and Mary of Bethany, like, Lazarus' sister, the same Mary, which was weird. <laughs> that was really weird. Um, but I really did, I did enjoy this book, uh, despite that. Um, yeah, I definitely want to keep reading this series. There's, I think, two more. Uh, they did have one of them at the used bookstore that we went to recently, but it was just more expensive than I want to pay for a used book, so I didn't be, get it. But definitely did enjoy this one. I would probably say three and a half to four stars for this one as well. Um, next I read Gask Elizabeth Gaskell's North and South, which was so good. Um, I really, really love this book. I love this story. I think I talked about this one in, I'm not sure if I gave a summary for this one in the vlog. Um, but it's about a girl who lived in the South and then of England, um, like the rural agricultural part. And then her father is a minister. And then basically he chooses to be, like he can't reaffirm some of the um, things that he would have been required to reaffirm to remain a minister in the Anglican church. And so um, he, they have to leave where they're living in the South and they move to the North where he becomes a private tutor. Um, and then um, this is a manufacturing town. So she meets, she makes friends on both sides, both the workers and the owners and um, things, things escalate. Um, it's a romance. So also that, uh, but yeah, I really like this. It's, it's a lot like Pride and Prejudice. Um, a lot like Pride and Prejudice, actually. Uh, but yeah, highly recommend this one. This one I'd probably give four, four and a half stars. I really love this book. So the next book I read is The Apostle's Sister by Angela Hunt. It's about uh, this, uh, Paul's sister. Um, Paul of the Bible, obviously, as you can probably tell by the cover and the title. Um, and she really wants to be a singer, but also she can't because she is a woman. Um... And she has to do just basically, her parent, you know, she has to just do, do what her husband says and stuff. Um, and so she, um, I did enjoy, basically, that she goes to Jerusalem with her, 
she gets married, goes to Jerusalem with her husband, and he studies with Saul, and then Saul has the has his experience on the road to Damascus, and then um, things happen from there, shall we say. Um, so, I did enjoy this book. I would probably knock it down to, like, it's probably only a three and a half to four star book, maybe, probably three and a half. Um, just because, like, I, I didn't, I liked her better clo further to the end after she had a baby. She was a lot of, better of a character. But before that, she was just, I don't want to call it, I, I, I expressed this in the vlog, I don't know what to call it. But she very much had just too rebellious of an attitude, I think, for a girl for back then. And especially a girl, like, whose family was like what you would guess Paul's family is. Like, there was just too much of that. So, anyway, I did enjoy it. It's just, you know, I... It was... <laughs> I just did not like her at the beginning. She, like I said, she got a lot better closer, like, about the middle of the book, maybe. She got better. But, yeah. So, that was that one. And then the next book that I read was... um. Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. Uh, this is the last Gaskell book that I have in this vlog. Um, and I got it at a used bookstore, so hence the sticker. Um, this one is about Molly Gibson, is the main character's name. And she, um, her mom died when she was really little. So she lives with her dad. And then her dad, when she's an adult, her dad gets married again and she gets a stepmother. And it's really just about their family life. And um, her stepmother is not like Cinderella's, maybe. <laughs> but also not maybe the best so yeah and then it's also about like she makes friends with neighbors and yeah it's a really good book I really like it um not a lot happens like I said and Molly is actually a very passive character it's really interesting actually um that she's a very very passive main character she chooses to do very little like until maybe the very last few pages of the book she does not take she does not make too many choices herself um, things just kind of happened to her. It's a really thick book. But anyway, I really like this book. I'd probably give it four stars. Also love the miniseries for this one. They also, like, they, this one, the adaptation is really good. I would say this adaptation is probably one of the closest I've seen. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed that book. Okay, the next book I read is, um, I'll just show you the side and then I'll show you the front. Abigail, um, by, uh, who's it by? I think Lois is her first name. Henderson is the last name. Yeah, Lois Henderson. Um, so, it's just a plain book. Um, Abigail, this is about Abigail, the wife of David. And she, um, it's just sort of like her life being married to Nabal first and how horrible he is and then her getting married to David and stuff. I enjoyed it. Um, I'd probably give it three and a half stars. I've read a better book about Abigail before. So, it's definitely not my favorite, but um, it's still pretty good and it's short, like, it's only like 200 and something pages, and then the, the text is really thick too, so, or big too, so. Yeah, this I got because uh, the library at my college um, was getting rid of a lot of books, and so I found, a not, I found a few of these, and I was like, oh, hey, I may as well pick it up and try it. They were given, like, it was like $3 for a Walmart bag, so yeah, I, we, we picked up a lot of books. Um, then I read, that one I would probably, I think I said three, three and a half stars, um, then I read Between the Lightning and the Thunder, which is about um, James, brother of Jesus. It takes place pretty much, there's a lot of flashbacks, but it takes place pretty much, like, right at the crucifixion through the resurrection. So, over like three days, but then he has a lot of flashbacks too. This one was really good. Um, there were a lot of, like, other Bible stories that they had make appearances, like, you know, um... For example, James knew the two thieves that were crucified with Jesus. Obviously, that's def almost certainly not accurate. Oh, and it's by B.F. Randall. But anyway, it's basically just James wrestling with, like, who Jesus really, like, trying to figure out who Jesus really was and remembering Jesus and stuff. And then he sees Jesus after the resurrection. Spoilers, <laughs> I guess. Um, well, that's in the Bible, so. But yeah, I'd say this one was pretty good. I'd probably give it four stars. It was, it was a really good book. Um, yeah. Yeah, so. Next book that I read was Peter Pan, and I'd never, by J.M. Barry, the original, like the original, I'd never read this before. Um, I've seen the Disney movie, um, but yeah, I really liked this book. Um, I mean, most people know the plot of Peter Pan. All children grow up, except, or all children, 
except one, grow up. And it was really, really good. I really liked it. I'd probably give it four stars. Um, it was really funny. There were a lot of lines that are just like perfect my type of humor. It was so good. Um, yeah. So recommend Peter Pan if you're in, if you've read, seen the Disney movie and you uh, would like to read the book, I recommend it. The ending is better. The ending of the book is so much better than the Disney movie. Um, yeah. Peter is kind of the worst, but that's a, like, other than that, <laughs> he's kind of a jerk, but a lovable jerk, I guess. But yeah. Um, so yeah, Peter Pan. Uh, like I said, probably four stars is what I'd give that. Um, next I read Beauty Among Ruins by Janelle Sisielski, maybe? I don't know. This is set during World War I. Um, it's a girl who, um, her, she's an American, like, New York socialite, and her uh, parents are fed up with her attitude and how she is basically just a very flighty young lady who doesn't do anything of, like, they, she won't listen to them. And so they send her off to England to stay with her cousins. And then while she's there, World War I starts happening. And so her parents say, well, we don't want you to come home when the Germans are shooting down boats. So they, um, she stays there. She and her cousin go off to a Scottish castle to um, be nurses for the men who are coming home from war. Injured, obviously, because nurses. Um, and then she and the Lord of the Castle meet, and then all of a sudden a lot of weird stuff happens. And so they're trying to figure out what's going on, and um, it was it was really good. I actually, like, it's published by Thomas Nelson. It's, I bought it on Christian Book. It wasn't very, a very Christian book. Like, I don't really remember anything Christian about it. There wasn't anything objectionable in it. So, I mean, it's it's clean, but I don't remember anything Christian about the book. I could be wrong. I could, there, it could have been there and I just missed it. Like, don't remember it. But I, just, I thought that was kind of weird. But anyway, I did enjoy it. Um, I'd probably give it three and a half stars. It's not really my time period. And, like, it is in England, so that that is more my my location. Started out in America. And I was like, wait a minute. I thought this was in... this was I thought there were castles. And then there were castles. So that's good. But, yeah. I enjoyed it okay. Um, it wasn't my favorite historical fiction or anything. Um, that would be a long list. But anyway, yeah. So, Beauty Among Ruins. And then I read Little Men by Louisa May Alcott. Um, I bought it used, so um, hence that. But um, this book, this is the sequel to Little Women, which I read earlier this year. Um, and I'd never, I'd read Little Women before. I just didn't remember it very well, other than like, you know, the big things that I guess everybody remembers, knows about Little Women. Um, and... Yeah, Little Men is very good, actually. Like, it it very much is like Little... Like, you can tell this is the sequel to Little Women. Joe is in this quite a bit. It's about Joe and Professor Bayer. They start a school at the end of Little Women. So, oh, yeah, spoilers for the end of Little Women, I guess. Um, but it's, like, really old, so... Yeah. Um, they start a school for little boys, and this is about their school. Um, Joe is perfectly in character. I love her so much. Um, she's just like the Joe from Little Women. Uh, which I guess makes sense, because the same author, so she would hopefully remember how to write her. But it's just, just perfectly, like, just exactly like Little Women. Um, yeah, even though it's about boys now, it's still like the exact same sort of story. So I really did enjoy this book. Um, I'd probably give this four stars. I did enjoy Little Women a little bit more, though. Alright, next I read Deadly Disclosures by Julie Cave. This is, <laughs> I don't read a lot of suspense, um, but this one I found when we went up to the Ark Encounter in Kentucky with our church. I found this book and I was like, huh, well, I may as well give it a try. Um, so I read it and it was actually, I really liked it. I think I might actually like suspense. I just don't read it ever because I don't read a lot of contemporary. So that could be why. But I think I'm going to try to start picking up some more suspense because this was really good. Um, I will say for, uh, well, I'll give you the um, summary or not really the summary, I guess, but like, basically, the um, secretary of Smithsonian, the guy who's over the Smithsonian, disappears. And um, these two FBI agents get together and start working on, like, solving the crime and stuff, figuring out why it happened and what's going on. And there's just, there's, they obviously are ha struggling to do that. So, yeah, it's just sort of them figuring out what happened. And then there's a lot of, like, flashbacks to, like, his past and stuff. 
I will give a couple of content warnings on this. One, there was one inappropriate, like, use of language. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't cursing or anything. It was just like, I wouldn't say it. And my husband agreed it wasn't exactly great when I showed it to him. But we were both like, well, it's kind of, kind of minor. Um, let's see. I was trying to see if I could find it real quick, but I don't think I can. Um, but anyway. Um, yeah. It's like minor. Um, but yeah, there is something kind of like, it's not even a joke. Like it's, it's minor, very minor. Um, and then the other thing, couple content warnings are one, there's a lot of discussion about school shootings. So FYI, like Columbine is mentioned. And then I don't know if the others that were mentioned are historical or if they're for the made up for the book, but Columbine, I mean, obviously everyone knows Columbine was historical. So, uh, just so you know, that's there. And then the main character is a drunk, is an alcoholic, very much alcoholic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she drinks quite a bit in the book and then she also very is very much contemplating suicide through the whole book so if any of those things are things you would not like to read and there's a kidnapping and yeah so there's also that so and and murder um spoilers a little bit but like it's kind of eh. it, it does say on the back okay it says on the back so so yeah, if any of those things are things you wouldn't want to read, you may not want to read this book, but I did enjoy it very much. I would probably give it four stars, maybe. Three and a half, four stars. I'm not used to rating books, so I enjoyed it. My scale is, did I like it or not, usually. But yeah, I would give it, I'd probably give it three and a half to four stars. It was good. I'm going to read the next, the other books in the series, so. Yes. Then I read, we're almost done, guys. <laughs> then I read At the Back of the North Wind by George MacDonald. Um, I've read MacDonald before. I've read... Uh, Fantasties and Lilith and like a collection of his short stories um, and I really enjoyed it um, mostly just because I like Lewis and Tolkien and so knowing that he was such a big influence on Lewis and Tolkien I really just like his stuff I was like I should try it and then I tried it and I liked it so yeah um, this is an I'm not it's an allegory I'm not quite sure what's an allegory for because <laughs> allegory usually means like one-to-one -one. stuff like Pilgrim's Progress is what I think of when I think of an allegory but anyway, it's about a young a young guy, kid who is, uh, his father is a coachman, like, drives horses. And um, one night when this kid is up in his, like, loft bedroom, the um, the North Wind comes in. And she is actually a person. Like, she takes the form of a person. And um, she takes him off on adventures with her. Um, like, she, yeah, she takes him places. And so he starts looking for the North Wind. And he becomes a very strange child because of the North Wind. Um... I enjoyed it. I wouldn't say... I've already read another book for, like, in September that's McDonald's, so it's definitely not... The other one was definitely better, but it was still pretty good. I liked this book. I'd probably give it four stars also. Um, I also tend to like every book I read, in case you didn't notice. Uh, yeah. Then the last book I read, this is the last book for the month, guys, was Paralyzed by Alana Terry. Um, this is a sequel to a book that I read earlier in the year. Uh, what was the first book called? First book was called Unplanned. That's right. Um, so, spoilers for Unplanned, the first book. But, well, this is a Christian suspense. So, before I get the spoilers, this is a Christian suspense book. Uh, spoilers for the first book now. The main character had been kidnapped and lots of bad things had happened. Like, not anything. But she was kidnapped with a, a little a girl, basically. Like, yeah. She was sort of collateral damage. But she got kidnapped. And... Um, now in this book, basically she has severe PTSD, like severe PTSD, a lot of it. So yeah, that's basically the book is she has PTSD. And then also, oh no, there was a, one of the, like the killer or the not killer kidnapper had an accomplice that has not been caught. And so, um, oh no, now she's being chased by this guy because she knows things. And I guess it's unclear actually why he still cares Cause she never saw him before but anyway like she didn't see him when she was kidnapped but anyway um this book it was it was good i enjoyed it um i'd probably give it i'd probably give it three and a half stars but yeah there's more in the series i will continue this series but yeah um and she's also struggling with her faith because she keeps thinking like well i can't have ptsd i'm a christian like this i shouldn't need therapy i'm a christian stuff like that so um it was really interesting to read that but yeah, that was a really interesting thing to see as well. She th just thinks, you know, well, I would just feel better if I would just, you know, if I was a better Christian, I would feel better. Maybe this is why. Maybe this, you know, am I not going to church enough? Am I not reading my Bible enough? So that was an interesting, um, it was just interesting. I, I enjoyed it. So yeah, really good reading month. 
read a lot of books. Um, let me know if you've read any of the books and what you thought of them if you have read them. Um, yeah, see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.